When I think about where my interest in sound and in communicating with sound began, I can conjure up different snapshots from my childhood. I can remember being a boy, maybe five or six, listening to a ball game on a handheld radio in my bed after my parents thought I'd gone to sleep. I had it under my pillow and the, that whole deal. Another memory, you fast forward about a decade when the first Star Wars movie first appeared in theaters. I loved that movie. And I also remember getting a present, a cassette tape that had been sold as part of the Star Wars merchandising. And on two sides of that cassette, with just little bits of dialogue and sound effects and music from the movie, I could actually relive in my mind that whole story. And I listened to that thing over and over and over, eventually wore it out, I'll bet. Now, eventually I landed in the radio industry where I used my voice and music and other production elements to try and grab people's attention in just the same way. But I was just going on intuition then, what seemed like it would work and I would try it. Now as a researcher, my job is to really try to investigate and empirically demonstrate what it is about sound that captures attention. What is it about sound that moves people emotionally? And at the media school, we have all the tools to do it. We have the people and the equipment and the curious environment that allow me to really measure not only what people say about how sound or any type of media really makes them feel, but also to measure how it makes their body react. What makes your heartbeat change as you pay more attention to a certain part of a movie? What is it about a song that you loved as a kid that makes you smile and makes your palms sweat? Those are actually things we can get at here. And we actually have lots of fun doing it at the media school.